Hey everybody, welcome back to my book chat channel. So I thought I would jump on here as I have just a little bit of time that I can make use of. And sorry, the sun is coming in and out, so it gets really bright and then it doesn't. Um, but I thought I would jump on here and do a book review. I know it's been a little while, but as I have some peace and quiet and I'm getting back into reading after having taken a bit of a break that was desperately needed, I am jumping back in with both feet and I have a long list of books to get through. So this one is um, a book review called Betrayal and I'm just going to read the little blurb as I normally would do or the synopsis and this one comes straight off of Goodreads um, as I read this through ebook so I don't have the back of the book to read from. Um, I would generally say who the author's name is, but I will put it up here for you to see. But I'm not going to try and say this because I would butcher it beyond belief and I don't want to do that. So either way, the um, book is called Betrayal and just uh, I guess you can kind of see. And again, I will put up a picture if you can see so it looks a little better than that, not so small. Okay, so in usual fashion, I will jump into the synopsis and we will go from there. So if I'm looking down, it's because I'm reading off my phone. Okay, so burnt out by her horrifying experiences around the world, aid worker Ursula has returned to Iceland. Unable to settle, she accepts a high-profile government role in which she hopes to make a difference again. But on her first day in the post, Ursula promises to help a mother seeking justice for her daughter, who has been raped by a policeman and left in high and life in high office, who becomes much more harrowing than Ursula could have imagined. A homeless man is stalking her, but he is but he is hounding her or warning her of some danger. And why has the death of her father in police custody so many years earlier reared its head again? As Ursula is drawn into dirty politics, facing increasingly danger or deadly threats, the lives of her stalker, her bodyguard, and even a witch-like cleaning lady intertwined or intertwine. Small betrayals become large ones, and the stakes are raising even higher, exploring the harsh worlds of politics, police corruption, and misogamy. Betrayal is a relevant, powerful fast-paced thriller that feels just a little bit too real. Yep. So I've given this book a four to five and that has a lot to do with so okay this book has kind of left me feeling very I don't know weird if only because, I don't know, I've got a lot of mixed thoughts and emotions and a lot of it has to do with the fact that, okay, I acknowledge the fact that this book is called Betrayal. Okay, I get it. There's a lot of that going on. But this book, through just about every different type of major in-your-face betrayal situations that I could have thought of all into one story. You had a rape case, you had... Um, politics, corrupted politics, you had corrupted police officers, you had some sort of mystery revolving around okay. revolving around um, a past murder investigation and then you have to deal with Ursula and the misgivings and the ministry so this book comes down to, or it follows, um, or really focuses around like five groups of people, or five people, if you will. So you've got Ursula, who's the minister, or the new minister. You've got her bodyguard, who is supposed to be a driver, but he's driver slash bodyguard, and kind of is becoming a metal muddle of the two. Um, you've got the cleaning lady who is some kind of part witch type person. And then you've got the two others. You've got the homeless man that has been mentioned as a stalker. And then you have a the family of the police officer who has been accused of raping a kid. So 
there are five major pieces of this story and the story jumps back and forth between all of them and they're all very centered around the minister this new new lady ursula and there's a lot of ugliness that goes on and you know i found as i was going through this story i honestly found this story a little hard to finish and some of it has and it has nothing to do with the writing style i felt you know that was done very well i thought the, the book was well written even the flow wasn't too bad there was a couple of places where you know when they jumped from one character to the other where it could have been a little smoother um because I did get lost just a couple of times, but I mean, not for too long. I was able to backtrack and figure out exactly where we were. But, um, you know, outside of all that, the story itself was, it was okay. It's just, I was starting to deal with a lot of moral issues when it comes to some of these things. And they're heavy topics all in one book. You've got, like I said, so you've got five people that the, that the story revolves around. You've got the ministry and all of these other people outside of her all in connect, are interconnected with her in some way, shape or form. She's dealing with all of this at once. And, you know, they touch a little bit about, so you've got, okay, let's, I guess, focus on her for a second. So you've got the ministry or the minister, Ursula, and she's come into this world. And it comes to light that really she go, she only got the post because she was meant to be the fall guy. A lot of decisions were made recently within the ministry and they decided that some of these decisions weren't the best things that could have been done. So rather than have the golden boy come in and take over this role and take the fall for it by canceling all these miraculous things that were supposed to be happening, they hire her and she's supposed to fill this role and take the brunt of all the negative things once they start canceling certain projects that are supposed to happen. So in a short and to the point, she was supposed to be the fall guy because she was unknown. She was just thrown into the role and she was very well unaware of that particular point until much, much later. But you kind of start figuring it out that she was she was meant to take the fall for like everything and honestly her post only lasts like two weeks so everything that goes on is in the span of two weeks so you know they go over a bit of her past she was an aid worker and working in third world countries and all those kinds of things and yeah okay so i do have some sympathy for her the situation is not a good one it's a very ugly very negative very corrupt situation to be in and she is she's not corrupt but she's not innocent either in that you know she wants to see justice she wants to see the good you know overcome the bad and have a really good chance at this role and she had certain um, objectives that she wanted to fulfill going into this role. However, I'm sorry, but my biggest problem with her was the fact that she was having an affair on her husband. And okay, so spoiler alert, that is what it is. It is one of the biggest moral problem things in this whole book, apart from obviously the rape case, that I have a serious issue with. And actually, I'll take that back. There, was, there is a major moral issue I have with just about every single one of the people involved um again the book is called betrayal but still um you know the way they describe this lady's husband he is such a nice person i i i don't understand the concept of infidelity and you will never convince me of it otherwise um i honestly believe that and this is just my personal opinion so don't shoot me for saying this out loud but if you are at a point where that's where your mind is at and that is what you're already doing sorry but whatever relationship you're in is done so the fact that they put this and this is a, a real thing in this book this is very much part of the story so i had a real problem reading through some of that so you go from her who is having an affair and dealing with all the corrupt crap going on in the ministry then you jump into the next character who is the bodyguard um who she didn't want around to begin with and eventually had to take him on because of one thing or another 
you know, I'd say out of all the people there, he was the least corrupt, least complicated person there was. They made it clear he had some kind of a background, a negative history, wasn't raised very well. There was some violence and abuse there, but rather than succumb to his family and repeat that cycle, he lives a life of a lot of self-discipline. He keeps his anger in check, he keeps his body healthy, he keeps his mind healthy, and he's very careful about himself. And yeah, maybe he takes that to maybe a little bit of extreme at times, but, you know, he doesn't allow himself to, you know, become his dad, which is who they, they've mentioned a couple of times. And so the relationship that he's in is he has a girlfriend. Honestly, I had so many issues with her, with the fact that she has such a major jealous issue. Um, you know, they don't go into much of her background, so there more than likely is a reason for that. You know, there could be infidelity on her part, there could have been abuse, there could have been a number of reasons why she's got all these insecurities, or just plain insecure for no real reason. That does happen on occasion. Um, but there were so many points where I wanted to just, like, really, like, just, just get over yourself. <laughs> so the fact that it, you know, the way things ended with that, I was actually happy with it. Um, then you jump into the other situation. You've got the cleaning lady and the cleaning lady drove me crazy. You know, I will emphasize again, the book is called Betrayal. So there were a number of situations where, as far as I'm concerned, I didn't realize people could be so, so ugly, you know, and maybe it's just, I don't know, just because I haven't experienced, I mean, I've experienced a lot, but not like that. I mean, yes, I've taken, been taken advantage of and abused in different ways throughout the course of my history, but to befriend somebody just to get free meals, get free booze, get free drugs, and the occasional one night stand on the side while claiming that she's a good person just doesn't jive with me. So, you know, I understand being poor. I understand being, you know, maybe not the best off, you know, maybe a little bit below the poverty line or at the poverty line. I can actually relate to that. But that's no reason to take advantage of someone who was trying to be your friend. And so I have major issues with that. And I've got so like this whole book, like just one moral issue after another, whether it was the affair, the girl, the serious jealous girlfriend, or the cleaning lady who was taking advantage of good people in more than one way. Um, then you've got the whole family with the police officer, you know, who has been accused of raping a teenage girl who was babysitting their kid. Okay, again, so spoiler alert. But honestly, if you dive too far into the first chapter, you find all this out anyway. So I'm not revealing too much that isn't already in the synopsis either. Um, you know, it turns that family's world upside down and you get to see just how corrupt the whole situation is. He's a cop. He's trying to control certain factors and make the rape case go away while trying to lie to his family that he didn't do it when really he did. So, I mean, and it's all painted black and white for you there, you know, and then you jump into the last guy. There's a homeless guy that was mentioned who is, you know, her stalker. And there's a reason for that, you know. They go into this whole situation of you know, they make him out to be the bad guy, and there's a lot of mystery revolving around that, and it brings up the issue with her father, which again was mentioned in the synopsis, so I can say it without feeling bad about it. But there are just, you know, they, they look at him because he's a homeless guy. They don't, they, they don't take his opinion into account. They don't stop and talk to him. He's just a shadow. And it's sad that people that find themselves below the poverty line or living on the street for one reason or another not every we don't all start out that way in fact very few people start out that way it's just sometimes the way things work out and it's no one's fault or you know whatever but that doesn't make them any less human than someone who is not living on the street. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter if you are, you know, an ADA lawyer, the president, or, you know, working as a waitress behind the counter, or, or 
on the street. You, you're all human beings. And the amount of cruelty in this book is just, it's crazy. Um, it's, it's just, it's crazy. And all of it comes down to self-preservation. So you're willing to sabotage all these other people just to, you know, preserve yourself when really it doesn't preserve yourself at all. As far as I'm concerned, it makes it worse. So, I mean, and I won't claim to be a saint. I've made mistakes too, but nothing in the way of taking advantage of people. It's just, it just doesn't jive with me. So while I will reiterate the fact that this book was written well, there was a good mystery involved. There were several different elements. The flow was good. Um, it definitely piqued me interest and drew me into what was going on. I wanted to know more. Um, I think my only negative part on that was just, I, I wanted just a little bit more from the ending. Um, just a little bit more conclusion to some of the different situations that were going on. But with, because of all the ugliness that was thrown into one book, I had a really hard time digesting just how cruel these people were being and just getting through it. So there was definitely a point where I had to basically talk myself into just plowing through it and being done because I was so done with the cruelty. So yeah. And it's not fairy tale like it's very real scenarios. So it's even harder to digest at times. So yeah. Alright, so enough of that. That is my book review for Betrayal, and the case I didn't mention, which I don't think I did, this was a book review for HarperCollins Canada, and there will be a few more of those coming out soon, along with some more for Silver Shamrock. So, uh, and a couple of independent. I have a long list of books to get through now since I've taken a little bit of a break, but like I said, as I'm coming out of that, there will be more book reviews coming at you very, very soon. So I thank you all so much for tuning in, and uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. If you decide to pick this book up, I would love to know what you thought. It can be found on Amazon, it's on Kindle right now, both in audio form and ebook and physical form, so all the versions are there. Um, if you would like more of a in-depth review, because this was pretty in-depth, but not as detailed as my book blog, I welcome you to check that out. And I will throw the link down there in the description for you to check that out. And again, I thank you all so much for supporting me in this channel, and I will be back soon with another book review. Happy reading!